data we'll be going with the concepts of in terms of you know when we do the pen testing or beat hackers what uh the methods or the phases they go through so we'll be talking about reconnaissance in that we'll be going through scanning like port scanning looking out for the services and then we'll be utilizing those services in terms of uh, exploiting a machine so i'll be using my display table okay we'll be uh, exploiting it up so very first one is reconnaissance actually what i want to also tell you is that at times i might be going through some one note okay as a like a notepad kind of a thing that tool in order to explain more so we will be definitely going with that particular thing as well okay so it would be something like this okay so we'll be grabbing this one as well okay see very first one which you are talking about was your reconnaissance as i mentioned right explain this now my point is or my question is like why are we doing this what is the need of that why are we doing performing reconnaissance gathering information what is the requirement why we are doing it see uh if i talk about this reconnaissance and why it is required or why it is important as well because this is the most i would say crucial step okay this is the most crucial step if i'm performing reconnaissance like if i mention the phases phases are in such a way recon it is also known as a recon also or reconnaissance part of it contains like you know it's active passive and you can see scanning if i have to mention it separately okay then they try to gain the access or hack and cover the tracks okay see reconnaissance when we are talking about as you guys have mentioned it is like gathering information here we are gathering information about whom about the target correct we are gathering information about the target doesn't it that's pretty much obvious so why are we gathering information about the target that is the main question right as i mentioned this is that's the reason it is quite an uh, essential and very crucial step so here you can see if be it your pen testers be it your adversaries or you can say your attackers they are trying to gather the information which they can use in order to plan their operation see uh, for example maria asked about ch v11 course right uh, regarding the course so what maria will be doing uh, maria will be searching about the course right first like what it is all about what all things are present in there how much domains will be there what will be the cost what will i get after clearing the exam how many questions will be there these things right you will be gathering this information before you opt for that particular course how much it will be costing and all that part isn't it so if you are taking an any any exam any kind of an exam so before you take that exam you gather the information over there right we naturally do that isn't it fix like you know your parents are deciding whom to marriage so they do some information gathering isn't it before you you get married to them they'll be inquiring okay about their parents their nearby right their relatives how that person is what that person does these kind of thing isn't it so same way over here if we talk about in terms of a perspective of a attacker or a pen tester what do they do these are the hackers even like you know they will be gathering information about their target so see if i talk about you know in terms of information okay so it's not like if i say that okay hack sayum's account or hack sayum system with just a name it's not possible correct with just a name it's absolutely not possible so what do we do we try to gather more and more information about sayum right 
we might go to you know uh, his facebook profile his instagram linkedin profile and gather more and more information about him so that we can utilize it somehow correct so that we can utilize it somehow so what i'm trying to say is with just a name guys with just a name it's like in this big world you're on the outer layer of it okay with just a name in this big world you're on the outer layer of it so with just a name you can say you are here you won't be able to perform any kind of an attack because you are too far away from your target right so what do we do we gather information about the target so you'll be gathering information about same that like where does he live right what he do and step by step you are trying to narrow down your search you are narrowing down your source so you can say with these information you are this part now like you know where does he work what's his flat number or house number on which street he is living in right so you are getting more closer so finally you will be reaching out to this point where you get some vital information regarding same which you can use for example if you even if you get my email id you can use my email id right these things can be performed he can send me a malicious email or malicious link attached to it and like you know as soon as i click it gone right like i'm falling for his trap so that's how you get you know that's a part of your recurrence it's not just like that if you remember we have discussed yesterday about apts right advanced persistent threat so as i mentioned these apts they are your highly sophisticated attackers okay so they do follow the step of phase of reconnaissance and when they are performing a reconnaissance it's not like just limitizing them in terms of email okay it's not like that see one point is every information is important every information like it's like all the tools might not give you the entire information right from few tools you'll be getting some some sort of information so every every information is important and they are useful so as i mentioned about apt what do they do they perform a reconnaissance and their reconnaissance is quite heavily or you can say exhaustive and extensive research they do about their target so reconnaissance it's just not like that okay i have got an email id or mobile number that's it no it also includes let's suppose your target is infosec train right so if your target is infosec train what do you guys look out for like what kind of a firewall they might be using isn't it what kind of a ids ips they are using antivirus is there any web application firewall or not email filtering is there or not isn't it getting my point what i'm trying to say over here so that whenever attackers they are gonna create a malware or any such that you know thing that will be bypassing these security measures which their target has taken got it so that's how your reconnaissance is done and that how like you know that amount of extensive research is required for that clear yeah. so that's your reconnaissance where we are gathering information more and more information about the uh, target you can say and you know trying to get into the vital point of it okay so as i mentioned like you know it will be consisting of you can say various techniques where your adversaries they will be actively or passively gathering information that will be used in order to perform their uh, operation or that can be used in order to support their attack okay so these in, uh, these information uh, they can be including your details of the victims organizations infrastructure or even their own personal details or staff details right these kind of a thing so as i mentioned uh, reconnaissance can be done active way and passive way also active if we talk about it's like uh, i'm actively interacting you can say or engaging with the target or target network or host or employees but you know you have a direct contact with them so for example port scanning right scanning for the vulnerabilities over there social engineering attacks and also be part of your uh, active reconnaissance right and passive reconnaissance will be like using publicly available information like we do have some uh, who dot is is there osint framework is there uh, 
we have google search engine docs so various things are there which will be helping to perform passive reconnaissance okay so when we are talking about reconnaissance you can say like uh, you know what i oftenly divide i oftenly divide my targets in two parts you know it can be a person and it can be the organization based as well isn't it right a person in an organization that can be my two primary targets when i talk about in terms of gathering information for someone so when i'm saying about it's like a person and an organization okay so how can you collect information about a person like if i ask you guys that okay you know search information about or gather some information about same so what will be your steps like what will you do or what will be your approach if i talk about right now if i talk about only passive way i'm not going to include the active way social engineering we know that as i mentioned right now i'm just excluding the part of social engineering just as of now okay telephone directory yeah very good point definitely why not yellow pages telephone directory although they are very old as you mentioned right maybe more, mostly of them are obsolete now but in case if you get your hands on on them but here you are doing what you are directly contacting with the target isn't it as i mentioned you do not have to directly contact with the target right now got it so kind of a passive way okay so we'll see okay <clears throat> so social media very good input companies website for organization based very good input yellow pages can i also mention google like the very first thing which you will do obviously will be googling that person i'll be using google for that correct so i will just mention google social media or social networks definitely uh yellow pages pretty good point with that also we do have some people search engines as well okay and even knows about them so we have some tools you can say where you can you know actually go over there and it look out for different different people and it might give you the you know just it's, it's just that you just have to give their names over there and as soon as you give the name it will be bringing all the details for you okay we'll show you one of them neil shukla yellow pages consider them like a telephone directory okay when where your names uh, along with that your number your family name what you know where you work your business work all these details your address are mentioned in it quite like a telephone directory you can say mega dumpster diving pretty good yes definitely we can go with that so i will be explaining that part in terms of social engineering again okay see <clears throat> many of us like you know almost everyone i would say they when whenever they are trying to find for a job right whenever they are trying to look out for a job they upload their resumes in some a uh, job portals correct or job sites isn't it nokia.com is there monster is there plenty of them are there right so when they are looking out for a job via job portals or some job sites do you guys upload your resumes over there right so now my point is let's suppose if i am an uh, hacker can i can i impersonate as an hr create a profile over there and make a fake uh, you can say things like okay we are hiring and you know regarding this requirement so people are going to send their resumes right or i like you know i can be a part of a group as well where i can personally contact or you can say i can directly contact with my target in terms of jobs right so we have you know an example as well so what happens like you know they can fake or i can a uh, hacker can impersonate as an hr and now when people are going to apply over there they are going to apply along with their resumes and we all know that in our resumes the informations which are mentioned they are quite accurate isn't it
isn't it so except with the fact if someone is faking the skills right apart from them apart from that almost everything is uh, accurate in that part right in your resume so i can utilize it right a person or a hacker can utilize it because he got the number he got the email he got the address as well so you know or he know what that particular person is having a background so let's suppose if i got a resume which says uh, edward is uh, from uh, you know non it department so i can like you know it will be a bit more easier for me in order to perform some phishing attacks on edward right because i got his email now i can use a phishing email in order to you know make him fell for the trap isn't it so these kind of information gives a way too much you know help to the hackers so as i mentioned like you know hacking just remember doing a hacking is not like a you know one day job or two day job it's like it takes you know ample amount of time in order to perform an attack like if you give a study to all you know various hacks which have been happened it takes attackers a plenty amount of time in order to execute it okay so quite a big rule that hacking requires patience so you have to master the patience right all right getting back to the point over here uh, job sites we have seen right so a lot of things are there in terms of person we have seen in terms of if you talk about in terms of organization we can use word we can use a uh, company's website right we get some information from the company's website as well isn't it some numbers some email addresses as well over there uh few of them i will be showing you later uh, website mirroring is also there website mirroring or you can say website copier we do have some tools which are like with the name ht track what it does it will be literally it will copy the entire website into your local system now you do not have to go back again and again or create some logs over there in that particular website you can since you got entire thing on your local system you can directly access it over there so it will be just cloning or you can say copy the website into your local system okay i oftenly give this example also google map it's quite interesting okay first of all that google map can give you the literally the location right if i write an organization on google map chances are pretty good that i will be getting a direct location of that particular organization where it is situated right one thing yes mari exactly secondly it also have a very uh, you know crazy feature you can say distinctive uh, feature which is with the name street view is there which can do what it can literally give you a 360 degree view of that particular area so one day i was just you know playing around with it so i dropped a street view nearby in order to find a you know some cafe and what i observed is that i was able to see the cameras which were located in the nearby area so that can be quite helpful right and can give you a quite area about the entire or you can say uh that premise or you can say that nearby area so that i can plan accordingly if i want to go or perform some attack by entering into the premises because see hacking is just not doing it remotely let me tell you that right we have seen this in movies we have seen this series also or tv series that you have seen that you know hackers what do they do they connect their cables with their systems or you can say with the data centers and then they try to hack from there also so they enter into the premises right by impersonating as a you can say uh, you know uh, caretaker whatsoever right so they try to impersonate them and then try to take an advantage out of it and performing the attacks after entering into the organization right so similarly these uh, google map can be quite useful so for example if i have to show you uh there is also a game with that for that particular thing with the name geo guesser go can you see it gave me a 360 degree view about that particular location see you can see okay people are nearby i can take a walk along with it right see correct 
here so quite a you know crazy one it can help you a lot so if you are able to see okay nearby cctv cameras it will be quite essential right so these things are there in terms of your you can say google map gives you that street view which can be helpful in this in this way so it's quite you know effective as well see all right that's how you can use your uh, google map i would say okay many more are there if i have to show you uh, let me take you back to the slides here a lot of tools are there google docs dig ns lookup woof woof the harvester dns recon recon ng who dot is netcraft osint people search engine social media we have discussed companies website wayback machine and social engineering as simply means googling things in a smart way or google hacking yes at what you can say that definitely so it's like how you google things in a better and efficient way to get more specific information about the target okay so for example yeah so let's suppose if you are trying to find edward kuma if i just write his name i hope it's a full name edward my point is let's talk about the concepts guys okay, this part this part let me change the color this part is known as your url okay this is referred as your title and this is your text so we can search on the basis of these not these are three just which i have mentioned there are plenty of more okay so we can search on the respect of these three things right now if i want you to focus on focus on the number of results 327k right quite of a big number if i have to go through all you know with all of them it will take a lot of amount of time for me to you know look out for each and every results so what i can do i can be smart around over there i can simply write something like this in url and hit enter can you see the number of results now just 367 you know as compared to that 300k plus it's way too less so i can even you know consider going with that particular 367 results and i can try to search for someone so what it did basically when i write i n u r l edward kume what it basically did is it searched for edward kume i hope i am pronouncing the name correctly uh so he will be searching google will be searching for edward on the url part doesn't matter if it's in title or in text part if it's there or not it doesn't matter it will specifically looking for edward on the url part of it okay so whatever the results we'll get edward kumai will be mentioned over there okay maria try to uh, maybe see if the syntax are correct and that is also absolutely fine it doesn't matter you know all right now see <clears throat> what my point is this is how you can you know narrow down your search right better than going for lakhs or you can say you know thousands of results better to go with the hundred ones doesn't it so similarly there are more there are more it's not like uh, i'll be sticking up with you know i and you are all just like that so for example if you are talking about ch for example and if i write file type pdf uh, now can you see the entire results over here they are pdf only correct and the result will be pdf based see it's entirely a pdf so these are what these people call it google hacking that's a kind of a fancy name but it's basically a google docs these are entire database for that google hacking database we can see can you see these things are being used over here so you can get some interesting files over here or some links which you can utilize so you can go for the filter categories 
in terms of footholds, web server detection, vulnerable files, vulnerable servers, error messages, file containing QC information, file containing password, right? So these Google hacking database, this gives you pretty good, you know, information and results. So you can utilize it for your own purpose, right? So even your threat intel team, threat intelligence team, they also perform these these similar operations and they tend to look out for the you know interesting links over there and try to learn and gather the information or intelligence out of it people search engine right i told you about that let's suppose there's in spokio just to give you a difference spokio is kind of a people search engine. i can literally type a person's name over here for example if john smith it's let let me uh, tell you that it is quite uh specific to a us base okay it's quite specific to a us based so I can look out for John Spin. I can see it's quite specific to Lewis in the map. I will take it certain amount of time and in during that time period it will be looking out for the current address or you can see information regarding that particular person. Who, right like John Smith who you are searching for. So current address phone numbers emails family members their age like for example over here it's 80 right resides in Milwaukee lived in Pearson right uh, related to James Smith Dan Smith Charlotte uh, Amanda, Amanda, Michael, right? Their address, phone number that uh, related to that person, email. If you can see for more results, and I believe like it will be asking you to subscribe it basically, right? It will be tend to give you these informations. They're just random numbers mentioned over here. But once you purchase or you can say subscribe to it, it will be giving you these further informations as well. Okay, and you can filter out the search on the basis of you can say locations. They are here. 52 location based so these kind of a thing are you can say where you can get the information regarding a people uh, Often known as a people search engine. Okay, so spoke is one of the examples for that Similarly, I can go with the HT track. It's a website cloning as I mentioned. It's a copy What it can do it can literally copy simple steps are mentioned over here. It's quite you know an easy job to go with it You can just mention the URL to you guys on the chat so you can use it later later whenever you want to so it will be literally copying the entire thing locally into your system or you can say copy the entire website locally into your system okay simple steps accept the links and just fill out the pages which you want to copy and here you go you can say it is copying the entire binary pioneer animation.com and all the pages all the directories like slash default slash catalog index catalog new release so these are different different directories or different different pages involved in that particular website of pioneer animation so it is literally cloning the entire thing or copying the entire thing into your local system once it's done you can look them in local into your system so that's quite a crazy tool in terms of cloning the website local into your system right so it's pretty good one as well so that was your regarding uh cloning or copying the website okay now <clears throat> if you want to gather some information you can see you know uh, people search engine is there right who dot is i mentioned a lot of things are also apart from that are there like dig is there right so okay for example so see uh in order to dig or in order to get some information like you know before i go for the dig there are some commands in Linux like one is with the name man if you know about it man man is like a manual which will be giving the entire information about that particular utility or tool which you are using or anything you can use it like manual is something like whenever you buy a phone or whenever you buy something okay for yourself have you ever seen that it gives you a manual along with it right it tells you how it can be used and how it can be utilized correct so that's your man it will be telling you how this tool or how this utility can be utilized see it will be giving the description it will be telling you you know the synopsis of the things which can be used along with that particular dig command it is for dns lookup utility right you can look out for that uh, dns with that using a dig command so a lot of things are mentioned in terms of that simple usage where you can use it Correct. Okay. Not just that. If you want to get a one-liner definition, we also have what is. 
see it gave you the definition for that it will be telling you simply what it is okay so what is the dig it tells you that this is for the dns lookup utility got it so how can i utilize it or how can you use it uh i can simply write dig train.com see it gave us information regarding infosec train.com that we are using the a service in terms of uh server based mail exchange are not mentioned okay perfect ips are listed over here right also section is mentioned over here correct that is good cool so we got some sort of information using your dig command for your dns lookup it will be giving you certain information in terms of that right so we got an ip related to that particular domain name which is infosec train okay so we got a record regarding over there and ip okay some sort of information we got over here all right no problem so address record is the address record is there which will be determining the ip we got that ip belongs to this particular domain right fair enough we got it what i can use it uh, i cannot also utilize it in different way if i want to make it more specific to your name servers now i can use this command see name servers doesn't it IP is related to that. Sort of information you are getting. Correct. It's very specific to your name servers. Uh, there is also a website which is quite useful in terms of your, uh, you know, dig command. Just give me a second. Okay. Uh, if I search it, there's a very cool one zone transfer. this one it's quite good okay i will just drop the link over here you can utilize it or keep a note out of it it's quite good okay it give me a second guys All right, yeah. So uh, it's quite crazy. It will be giving you an entire, you know, how you can use the dig command and you know how you can utilize it. It's quite crazy one. So you can always, you know, in your free time, I would uh, suggest you guys to go through this one. It's quite crazy, and you can utilize it, right? So even like you know, if I have to look out for dig for it, I can use you know Google's uh, DNS over here. I can simply write 8.8.8.8. It's regarding Google's uh, DNS lookup. And I can simply write zone transfer.com. Different different ways are there in order to perform the dig trick. Okay. So you got some information. You got the A record, the address record for the zone transfer. If I try it simply without Google, it might not give you the results. See. Okay, it also worked. That is fine. Both of them are giving you the results. Pretty good. Right. So this is how you can use a dig command in order to look out for the domain name servers uh dns recon is also there for dns recognition or reconnaissance i mean so dns recon i can use i might use, i guess i might not have mentioned it over there hyphen d and you can simply write the domain name along with that so if i write something like this infosectrain.com performing general animation on of domain infosec train Da, 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 da. we got certain information right for mail exchange we got it right correct so mail exchange or something which will contain the host name right that handles the emails for, for that particular domain so we get something for mx base right pretty good okay name servers are also listed over here so quite a good 
result over here right quite a good one uh this is also dns sec is not configured for information sec uh, infosec train.com this is regarding dns security right this is regarding your dns security so you know uh i would be suggesting you guys to learn about dnssec and in case if there is no dnssec what all attacks can be also performed out of it right so just to let you know like you know uh, for example there was dns dns cache poisoning so in order to block it we use dns security so you know we can get these kind of information as well so don't you think it's it is quite uh, a pretty good tool dns recon which is giving us to and uh, telling you information that dnssec is not configured in in infosec train so giving a quite good information isn't it right maria yes but still these tools are something extra which i'm telling you guys and you know similar tools are also mentioned in the ch if you talk about for example if i perform the same thing for certifiedhacker.com okay got some information the seamless information for that also that is good okay okay perfect perfect srv we got something to you know react to srv srv is something you can say it's your dns resource record actually Okay, where you identify the computers which are hosting some specific services okay so they are used to locate the domain controls for active directory i'm done yes as you mentioned it at the time right maria uh, command is dns recon perfect so that was regarding you can say your dns recon similarly you can say we have one more if you talk about in terms of looking out for web application firewall if it's present or not so waf woof is there waf woof so if i look out for certified hacker.com looking out for it okay so it says what the site certified hacker.com is behind mod security spider labs web application firewall so they are using this kind of a firewall over there simply you can search for who is uh certified hacker.com it might be nathan it might be you can give it a try it might be okay so by using who is certified hacker it gave me a lot of information regarding it right it's registry domain information register information right their name servers will be also attached to it admin phone number countries emails right see correct postal code phone number yet again right name servers which is bluehost is you know taking care of it for them Correct. So what actually is done actually uh, when we try to you know do some reconnaissance, what all the findings which we have, like a number, email, we create a you can say directory or you can say a file. We'll be storing all this information which we have gathered so that we can be or we can utilize it later whenever we are performing some attacks, right? This is how you can look out for them. Similarly, like, you know, if I go for this who dot is over here, if I mention a domain, for example, if I'm looking for infosec train, something like that it search service go daddy similarly over there for certified hacker it was bluehost right status expires on register on updated on name server related to that similar domains right register data quite the you know information so it's like what we are seeing in this online way we can do it you know with the command line as well isn't it does it look similar to you right so a bit more details you can see you might also get by using your command line part so you can go with the both the ways in order to look out for it uh, i can also do what i can do something like what web infosec train 
डॉट कॉम ओके सो टेल्स यू व्हाट ऑल थिंग्स आर देयर इन योर दैट पर्टिकुलर वेब एप्लीकेशन okay so for example it tells you that okay this domain has been moved from here and it has been moved or redirected location is this from http to see https correct uh it is using apache server country india server is apache ip is also listed along with that right jquery is being used version number as well is also mentioned which is quite an important thing right now you can look out for the attacks which might be specific to these versions or you know which are listed isn't it so email is listed this one in that particular id and title is this they are using wordpress wordpress technology right so quite a good information we are getting out of it right it, it tells you like what you know what all uh, these uh, technologies or uh, you know are being used in that particular web application similarly you can also do that in this way also if i go for infosec train like this and can you see there's a weaponizer tool over here so it's catching more and more tools see 17 now is it done okay see technology at least and gives you pretty much good results wordpress google analytics are being used live chat is also indexed WhatsApp business chat is there. Google Tech Manager, WordPress is being used, which you already saw, right? Apache server, which you saw, based out of PHP. jQuery is being used. The versions are also listed. Database of MySQL. So what my what I'm trying to say is, first thing, you cannot be dependent to only one particular tool, right? You have to go with other tools as well in order to gather information. In order to gather information, and along with that, since we are getting these findings, don't you think? it will be quite helpful in order to perform an attack so like if i got to know okay this is the apache and this is the jquery and like you know if i got the version as well i can look out for a vulnerability specific to those versions and i can you know exploit it correct so different different ways are there different different measures are there which you can utilize in order to perform an attack we have seen couple of them netcraft is also there uh, it's pretty good like you know when you get some limitations in terms of who dot is netcraft is also there which can give you quite good results you can go for resources site report okay this rating is quite given zero by the netcraft site rank is this description site over here net block owner hosting company ip hosting country name servers are also listed which you have already seen in your who dot is right dns admin also we already saw that particular thing in the previous tools ipv6 address is not present reverse dns is with this ip okay perfect ipv4 geolocation is also there see it gives you delhi in india correct not just that you get some more information like hosting history apache apache perfect one thing if you can observe over here can you see the version numbers are also listed previously now they are not correct so that's my point like if you are getting see now as in hackers perspective if i talk about if i am able to see okay version numbers 5.37 and then uh 6.04 right so what i can guess if i try to make a wise guess that at least like you know infosector might be using 6.0.4 or something newer right so at least i don't have to go you know till this 5.37 and you know uh, do more and more research so i'm narrowing down my search isn't it i'm cutting down entire efforts now uh suba absolutely you can search for an exploit in respect to these versions definitely you can do that correct right so you can get the dmag information you know policy framework which they are using right what kind of a mail gen which they are using technologies are also listed quite a you know one stop shop kind of a thing where you can get plenty of details right so it's quite crazy netcraft is also a quite good one in order to you know gather the information i would say right uh 
harvester is also there if you talk about harvester okay it looks like this and these are the options which also gives you which you can use in order to get some results so i can simply write the harvester hyphen domain which i want to look out for for screen dot com i can use the sources for example if i am trying to use linkedin let's see so start searching for the linkedin and so linkedin it will be searching for infosectrain.com specifically searching 100 results searching 200 300 400 all right now can you see we got some pretty good hits it says in some results it says users found 72 so now you are getting a pretty good result right that these many users are present in that particular company isn't it so it's a pretty good lead right i'm trying to see if my name is there or not <laughs> okay it's not there perfect luckily right but i can tell you that these are very authentic one and yes these are the correct names as well google.com over here and you can specify length if i have to specify oh invalid source okay 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 Q. yes indeed they are okay nothing found out that is crazy sometimes just to let you know it might work it might not okay so you can you, you can try this on your system let me know for me it is not giving any result but for you it might give you some results give it a try it often does that thing see <laughs> falling grid didn't give me any time anything now so it happens so that is absolutely fine Give it a try for Google. It might give you some hits. Okay, it does support Yahoo, but I don't know what is happening to it. Not giving results or not able to perform it. What happened? Did we got something? Hmm. Many search engines are there, just to let you know. Uh, Benji is also there. I have to show you. You can simply do the manual of it, and it will be giving a pretty good results. Like, let me write man and the harvester. Okay. okay cool no worries so what we can do with the harvester options it can give you the entire options in front of you okay not much in details though but fine it tells you like you know what all sources you can use so that is absolutely fine right perfect so this is how you can use your basically the harvester multiple options are there okay which you can utilize so even if you write you know the harvester hyphen hyphen help it will be giving you the entire help like you know how you can utilize what all things can be used in order to perform it right see it tells you what all things are there and you know how you can use them basically right so all the information are mentioned see all these resources can be used in order to search sort of like binge tns dumpster duckduckgo otx linkedin right plenty of them netcraft is also there so you can utilize these in order to get some more information okay and it will be tend to give you more and more results all right so that's how you can use the harvester guys
okay now okay OSINT is there Google company website it's going okay way back and OSINT okay got it now uh, for OSINT you can see what you can do you can simply write OSINT framework you can see a pretty big you can say you know structure is there which can help you to get the information regarding these things so for example if i'm trying to look out for an email address i can go for email search all these tools are there in front of you which you can utilize in order to find the emails in order to find the emails see plenty of them are there correct Similarly for domain names, you can look out for them. Who dot is subdomains if you want to look out for typo squatting, like you know, similar looking ones which are in respect to infosec train or anything like that. So these are the tools through which you can use in order to look out for the similar looking domains as well. So DNS twister is there. So if I write something like Tesla.com, it will be giving you some information regarding them as well see as i mentioned like you know typo squatting basically typo squatting is what it it tells you what like you know similar looking domains similar looking domains are known as a test or uh, typo squatting see the so these information can be given by a OSINT framework this is how you can utilize it it's a pretty crazy one okay in terms of doing some uh information gathering over there all right uh along with that way back machine this last thing which i wanted to show you before we go ahead for something else uh way back machine it's like what it what do they tend to do it's like archive.org is a link for it what they actually do they tend to uh list you out the entire history of the website basically so they keep a snapshot like you know since that particular website was created till this present time it will be keeping the entire snapshot of it so you can see what all changes are being made how that particular web website is functioning and mainly like let's suppose if i'm starting any business so in the initial time period of it i might be giving a number which is like you know direct my number basically right okay so if i'm starting a business i might give a number an email which is i'm handling right so I might put my number directly over there, my business number. So later, if that business evolved, I became you the CEO or you know I'm the owner of the company. Obviously, my website will also get evolved, and now I'm not gonna put my number over there, right? So you know the number, like email ID will be like, for example, sales will be there. Number will be a, a general number for the queries. So I won't put my number now, right? So with this, it might give you or you might be able to get those kind of information or those old numbers something which are directly related to the you know uh, c level executives or anyone who is owning that company this information can be get out of it so i can look out for you know uh, website on this particular time period which was on october 28 2017 which was a snapshot was taken on uh, at 3 53 pm something around that time right so it can give you a snapshot of that particular website at this part of it perfect so see earlier it might take time in order to load these images because it's from back that time so it, it looks like this right back in the old days you can say it looked like this so not quite good and efficient but it was a start just a start right slow you know you might find some contact numbers email ids as well in the previous version of that website so you can look out for any particular domain over here you know it mostly keep for every one of it it looked like this at this time period right all right right and latestly just to let you know it looked like this this is how it looks like right now so earlier it looked like these in this way right clear now uh social engineering as i 
was talking about social engineering is also a part of it guys okay social engineering is indeed a part of it where you can gather more information so it comes it comes in multiple variants you can say social engineering it comes in multiple variants basically okay so when we are talking about social engineering what do you mean by social engineering so social engineering in short guys as you guys have mentioned pretty good definition by you guys uh it's in short if i talk about in terms of one line apart it's an art of manipulation art of manipulation or manipulating so here you do what you manipulate people so that they can give you information or they can give you the or give up some confidential information right so your pen testers your attackers they use these kind of uh, techniques okay and they try to get some information out of the users over here see basically guys just to let you know since we all know that in your organization there are some security awareness program right awareness programs are always conducted in your organization the reason for that is social engineering you can say part of it is there that's one of the reasons i would say since cyber security users they are considered to be the weakest link okay they are considered to be the weakest link but with the proper amount of training with the proper amount of training they can be the strongest link as well actually when we talk about in terms of hacking now finding a vulnerability and exploiting it it always will be there it will be always there okay that there will be a you know a strong point which a, you know a hacker would look out for he will always look out for a vulnerability but there is another vector also which is these users or human beings see if i ask you if 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 i give you a question like which one is a better option out of these two or which one is easier for you guys one hacking my system or you can say you know to to crack the password like you have to get the access of my system okay so one way is either you can crack the password that is one way second way is you know uh, gain my trust and maybe i might end up giving you access of my system directly which one is a better option to go with until unless my password is very weak just like you know a password at uh, password at that one two three of password as in password until unless that right so that's why see we as an hu- humans we as a user we have some nature nature to trust nature to help right so various things are there which an attacker or which these hackers or ethical hackers when they are they are doing the pen testing basically they took you know taken advantage of they look out for these kind of a uh, nature only and they you know take an advantage of that so social engineering can be performed in various ways various ways are there we'll be talking about couple of them very first one which is quite popular and very famous is your phishing right is your phishing <clears throat> we all know what is a phishing it's quite a you know general term phishing it's like an attack which where your you know these attackers they contact you via email so they will be sending an email which will be like looking like a legitimate one but along with that some malicious attachments or malicious links will be you know mentioned that particular email and as soon as you are clicking on that link you might be doing what you might be downloading some malware or you end up you end up giving some confidential information to the attackers okay so your emails can be like various way like you know so ma'am you want a lottery click on this link to avail your price or some threatening kind of a things will be also there that we got your some personal or private pictures and if you do not want to you know leak this leak this thing out click on this link and you know further process will be mentioned so both the ways are there through which your phishing attack can be worked so if your target if your receiver falls for that bait and respond to that email you know we are scammers and hackers then they were trying to engage with the target in a conversation you can see and they might end up getting some credentials out of those users or those receivers right or malicious money transfer might be there right or they might download some malware by clicking on the you know that particular malicious link so these thing can be performed out of your phishing based attack okay similarly we do have wishing <clears throat> wishing is what basically guys wishing is phishing over the voice call okay voice over phishing you can say so if you remember in my when i was giving my introduction i told you about you know 
a kind of a scam which was going on that was part of your wishing only correct we often see oftenly see this thing a lot that people are getting calls where you know uh, those scammers they you know ask you eventually for an otp so they will try to talk to you for a certain amount of minutes and the point is guys the the more you it might sound very silly silly but it's quite very effective and it's quite dangerous as well so it is said that you know the more you talk with these guys the more you fell for the trap it's, it's like i have seen that you know they have an entire piece of a document paper with along with themselves and the word is in the you know they know how how to tackle the scenario the choice of words they use it's quite brilliant and they will be manipulating you the longer you talk with them okay so that's how efficient this wishing very crazy series okay give it a watch it's not like you've seen you know hacking in movies where they randomly type anything <laughs> okay so i have seen this they legitly type some commands also and just give it a watch and see the you know this approach it's quite crazy this the series is also quite crazy you can give it a watch okay I'm not sure if you for what if it's on Netflix or Amazon. You can search out for this. So it is also pretty good. Now uh, moving on to the next one. <clears throat> Wailing. So see if you can break down this, uh, you know. As for the words, it's like a whale. Whale is what? Whale is a big fish, right? So, who are known as a big fish in your organization? The C-level executives, you know, correct? Or high-profile executives. So, when you are specifically targeting them, then it is known as a whaling. Okay? Then it is considered to be a whaling. So, it has to be very, you know, smart one. Whenever you are target, targeting these kind of a people, so if you are sending a phishing email to these specific person, it has to be <coughs> done in a very perfect manner, I would say. Shoulder surfing is there, as the image says itself, right? So it's like observing on someone's screen, having a direct observation from you can say, you know, uh, from the shoulder. Uh, direct observation is there and you can see you know what all work they are doing and you can get the information out of it so very common places would be like your atms isn't it we have seen that people those who are standing behind us they can have a direct access to our system screen or you can say atm uh, screen and they can see you know how much amount of transaction or pin we are using and all of these information out of it right see i have done this a lot okay I have done this a lot during my you can say college days or school days when i know i'm gonna fail i'm gonna flung on that particular exam so i start you know i know that last hour is left i got no other option so i start doing shoulder surfing so whosoever is sitting in front of me i used to have a direct observation into his answer sheet and then i copy the entire thing over there so <laughs> if you have done this that is also part of a shoulder surfing it's not cheating anymore it's a shoulder surfing okay these all things are your shoulder part of a shoulder surfing okay similarly we do have your in terms of social engineering we have dumpster diving which you guys were saying you know previously 
as the name suggests itself dumpster diving i guess we have discussed this previously dumpster diving is what it's like you know whatever the documents are being used do not throw them into a trash can correct so if you you know there is a project we use documents once they are of no use do not throw them like this or you can say make a ball out of it and throw it in the trash can right so we use shredding machine or shredder for that correct lucas yes but in office where will you burn those documents i guess yesterday also someone said that right so that's your dumpster diving correct we have already discussed about it tailgating what is the tailgating perfect so if you can see in the image also what that person is doing let's suppose this is your attacker or a hacker whatsoever you want to put it and this is your a genuine person an employee so what this person did let's suppose this is an attacker okay he was there and he is trying to access or to get past through this door but he was not able to do, you know do it because he is not having any id card so he did what he was waiting for someone to do it so this employee came in he have no idea if there is an attacker or not okay he does not have any idea so he swiped this card opened the door went in and this attack will do what by the time this door closes he will be following this particular employee and he will also enter in that particular area so this is what this is known as a tail getting so this guy is not having any idea that something this is happening you know behind him got it so that's your tail getting uh next one is your honey trap if you can see in the image itself right uh here what will be done correct so there's always an attractive lady who try to lure james bond or these kind of a people so that lady actually shows that or uh, portray that okay she is a waitress or normal any kind of a regular worker but actually that lady is a is an agent correct isn't it that what that's what happens so similarly over here what i can do i will be you can say beat any dating website or beat any social media platform so i'll be creating a fake profile using a very uh, you know in my profile picture i'll be using some fake photos of a very beautiful lady you can say and uh, my details will be also quite good you know my bio will be quite good so that whenever i see my target let's suppose this is my target and he is from infosec train right so i will try to lure this uh, target like you know i will try to create a fake relationship i can say online relationship on digital world with this particular target and then once i gained his trust and he you know fell for the trap i'll be asking to give some confidential information that's why it is known as your honey trap got it so these are couple of social engineering attacks okay so which can be also utilized in terms of performing some reconnaissance okay next thing is a scanning so i'm trying to get more information information like would be that i'm trying to find out you know that what all ports are there whether those ports are open or not i will try to discover the live host the ip address correct i will try to discover the operating system right what all services are running on the host discover the vulnerability in the live host these kind of thing are performed by your scanning part okay so here we try to you can say identify host port services in the network uh, scanning uh, like you can say by scanning it's kind of a, you know you are gathering some more and more information about your target gathering some kind of an intelligence about them about them which can be used by you can say a pen tester or an or hacker or any other attacker in order to create a proper profile of the target 
over there right so you can get some important i would say information out of it which you can utilize in order to perform some attack so for example this kind of like you know we got the ips out of it you can say right so we you know with this you can say we'll try to directly contact with those ips or try to connect with the system and try to get to know what all the open ports and services are running over there right so we have multiple options over there like for example discovery scan is there it will be telling you what all hosts are up can you see it is giving the results over here 192.168.56.100.103.110.115.113 so it is telling that these hosts are up and these are there in in your network doesn't it so it's a discovery scan okay it's like a ping sweep kind of a thing you can say least into this scan over there and it helps you to you know what all device are there connected in your network right then we do have a kind of a stealth scan okay stealth scan is a by default scan by the new and map you can say we use and map for in terms of scanning and what do they do they send the sin packet and they get a reply like synac is received from the other machine and then you you know abruptly close that connection over there so see what my point is i have to determine what all ports are open isn't it correct i have to figure out what all ports are open in the other machine so remember three way handshake anyone knows about three way handshake right it is used to create a connection so when yeah exactly alok so whenever you are trying to connect or trying to you know create a communication or do a communication you do a three way handshake right you open a connection over there it is used to open a connection so three way handshake is done by this way a sends sin packet to b b sends synac these are the flags guys okay those who don't know about these things sin and act these are kind of a flags which are used in order to create a connection over there in the with a three way handshake and a over here replies back with acknowledgement again okay cool so now what happens see whatever the port is open only with that particular port you would be able to do your three way handshake right so whatever the port is open only with that port you will be able to create a three way handshake now the point is if i send a synchronous flag and from the b side i got a synac so see whatever the port is open that port is replying back me the synac right that port is replying back with synac can you see in this part so only the port which is open it is replying back with synac isn't it a will simply send the reset in order to abruptly close that connection because my job is done i just want to do what all ports are open i do not want to create a connection and start doing you know or sending some data over there so since i got to know okay what port is open i'll be sending a reset flag over there and abruptly closing that connection right away and that's how you do or that's how your and map is performed do you want to see this a practical part like you want to see how things are done in practical ways for discovery scan for these kind of multiple options what say this is another machine which is quite vulnerable just to let you know for the practice purpose and pretty good in order to you know clear your concepts as well so that's a meta spritable machine just to let you know let me see if it's loaded or not okay if you can see on the screen that machine is asking for some login credentials right so my task over here is to do what i won't be entering the login details we'll try to get inside this machine by other ways okay so i'm not i'm not knowing what is the ip of this machine i'm not having any kind of a such information right so we'll try to determine those things now by using your either you can use kali i'm using parrot okay so both of them will be giving the same results that is absolutely fine now uh okay in linux if you have to find your ip you can simply write by writing if config it tends to give you the ip okay so i can use either the two scan or uh, two options if you remember 
when I was showing in his uh, PPT, you saw there was an option which is hyphen S in a discovery scan to see what all hosts are live, right? And up. So similarly, we do have an app scan also, which works in your internal network. Okay, both of them are fine. So you can use either of them. So if I write something like ARP scan IP zero slash 24, so it will do what it will be looking out for its subnet now. So now starting from 192.168.107.0 slash oh sorry yeah dot zero so it will be going like like this dot one dot two until your two five five okay so it will be pinging each and every ip over there and which server replies back it will be telling you that okay these ips are up okay got it so let's see three will be there by default okay dot one dot two and dot two fifty four will be there by default just to let you know these this and this this is always remain there because they are representing your network id default gateway and your broadcast ip so they will remain there so whichever is left whichsoever is left will be your another machine ip so that means this ip is of my metasploitable machine this one okay got it clear so far even i can do what i can perform nmap hyphen sn host is up right and if you notice these are the same ips 130 is my own ip of my parrot or you can say your kali right dot 254 dot 2 dot 1 and dot 132 right so 132 is here so it means it is a uh, metasploitable ip just to confirm you just to confirm you for that purpose only i'm writing the i'm logging over here can you see ip is what 192 168 107 dot 132 right 132 is mentioned and that is the same over here correct that proves that okay we got the ip of matter exploitable machine that is fine i am pretty much fine with that someone asked me what is the meaning of verbosity if i remember see if i am using an nmap command if i am doing a search on that particular 132 i got this results okay by default so it tells you that okay these many ports are open right these are the states these are the ports and these are the services running over them and 977 are closed ports we got this information but if i go with the verbosity which is done by a hyphen v like this if i hit enter it tells you what a more detailed information are mentioned right more detailed not version yet suba not version date that is another one for that hyphen sv is there okay so verbosity will be giving you some detailed output now see it tells you that the okay, ping scan is performed dns uh parallel dns resolution is being performed right it initiated with with which scan stealth scan right did i just show you that in the ppt that nmap by default does your stealth scan right and how many ports did it scan for it scanned for thousand ports correct thousand well-known ports always remember that thousand well-known ports out of which guys how many ports were closed 977 correct see 977 close up close ports are there and these are the open ones like 23 are the open ones now on this a bit more extra which i wanted to show you uh since Suba also mentioned it uh hyphen sv hyphen sv for getting the service version
So it will be scanning thousand ports because I haven't mentioned the limits over there, right? So it will be scanning the thousand ports and it will be telling their service version as well. So you will uh, you will see a fourth column has been added, right? See, correct. So we got the port state open services FTP running over there, and what kind of a version is there? For FTP, it's VS FTP 2.3.4. For SSH, there is for tenant is there. So similarly for all these 23 open well-known ports, we got their version as well. Now I can utilize these findings, right? As I mentioned, like you know, which brings us to the last step is like let's use our findings, correct? So in order to use our finding, what I will do, for example, if I got a version, so I can look out for an exploit based out of this version. I might do search exploit. We got plenty of them, right? And for 2.3.4, right? That's our version, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. There's an exploit present in our machine, which gives us the backdoor command execution, right? And for that, which you have to use Metasploit framework. It's a different thing, which is a Metasploit framework, which is quite popular in terms of your um, pen testing part of it. So I can do what, guys? I can simply go with what? Uh, I can do MSF console. It will be opening a Metasploit framework for you, which contains a lot of exploits, payloads, auxiliaries, knobs, product, you know, plenty of them. So we can use that. Let it load. Okay, it loaded the framework. So I will search for something which is related to your VSF TPD 2.3.4. If you can see, it brought me one exploit. It is starting with the exploit, right? So it's an exploit. So if it was auxiliary, it would have written with auxiliary or something like that. For post, for post, these kind of a thing. So we are pretty good, pretty lucky that we got only one exploit. So we'll be using this exploit in order to enter the operating system of Metasploit table two. Okay, so let's see. In order to use it, simply use command use. Either you can write the index or you can simply copy this entire thing and paste it. So I'll be going with the easiest way, writing the index number. You can see my prompt just got changed. Can you see? It has accepted that exploit now, right? Now I'm using that exploit, doesn't it? So now I can write show options in order to see what all settings are mentioned over there. Okay, payload has been set, which will be helping me to do my exploit. Our host is not set. Our host is your remote host, so you can set a target host. So my target host is Metasploit table two, right? So that is not set, but port is set, so I'm pretty much fine. I'll simply set my R host with the IP of my Metasploit table machine because that is my target where my this payload and exploit will work. So if I do my show options again, ta -ta, our host has been set. I will simply use this exploit in order to exploit a vulnerability and get a backdoor execution. Can you see it says command shell, found one shell and command shell has been started over there. A session has been created. And I got a UID of zero, which is of root. What it meant, just to clear it for others. Guys, uh, have you ever noticed in your Windows machine, we do have as a normal user, and we do have a, do have a administrator also present over there. And this administrator is the one which is having highest privileges in that machine. Because often you see that once you run as administrator, it starts working. Or often it's oftenly some application of file says that you do not have administrator permissions in order to access it. Correct? Ever seen such things? Right? So administrator in your Windows is the user which have most privileges, right? Most privileges. So you can do anything once you if you became an administrator. Similarly, when we talk about in terms of Linux. A root user is equals to an administrator. He is the one which have all the accessibility, all the privileges, all the permissions. So this root user can, like you know, as a normal user, you might not be able to delete 
or access any file but as a root user you have all the access all the permission you can do whatever you want to do okay i'm then as you for switch user from user to user sudo is for becoming you can say for as a root user in a simple language okay super do user you can say clear everyone so root user is the one which every hacker or you can say attacker tries to escalate their privilege to so if they hack your system they will try to become a root user so that they can have all the permissions all the accessibilities over there perfect and as uh, subha also mentioned that is a very good point you can see whenever i became a root user no i got a hash in front of me but if i become a no if i'm a normal user it will be dollar sign that is a key point to note okay but subha just to add on something to that if i got a shell access right now correctly if i cannot see any kind of these uh, you can say you know something which can notify that i am a normal user or a root user right i got a command shell but nothing is being displayed in front of me so i have to determine what i am in this particular machine right okay. so for that what you can do you can simply write who am i if you write it what does it says you are a which user you are a root user got it it means i have root privileges as of now and if i do if config it tells you that you are in because it is 132 right i can also do right uh, unim hyphen a pw is different directory in which that you are working right now and then it helps you to turn into the privileged user which is your root user if i do unim hyphen a you can see it tells you what you are inside which machine it gives you the operating system and you can see the kernel versions and kernel details as well this unim hyphen a Let's see that you are inside metasploitable two machine, right? So I can see the files inside it. These are all the files inside your metasploitable machine. I can create one. For example, if I create a touch command, if I'm using in order to create a file, and let's suppose let's suppose if you are creating an Edward name file, Edward dot eight. Okay, if I do ls. Da -da -da -da. Name at right. That I'll go back to my. Okay. Can you see? There's a file with the name Edward dot txt right now. So, does that prove that we have successfully exploited this metasploitable two, and we are inside it? How you can perform the exploit? Right. How you can get inside? Teens of. Uh, uh, 